Ever since the launch of my skincare brand, and honestly for the months leading up to the launch as well, I've been traveling a ton, and I thought I'd show you what I do with my hair, how I style it, what products and tools I bring with me, etc., to keep it looking good and fresh and manageable on the go. If we haven't hung out here before, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California and the founder of the skincare brand Prequel. I'm really here to help you understand your skin and your hair and your nails and to help you find products that really work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up, definitely subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family. Okay. For some context, it is late Friday night. I am in Los Angeles. I work in Northern California. I had a whole day of clinic, finished that, went to the airport, flight was a little bit delayed flew down to LA and the next two days I have a bunch of work stuff related to skincare brand, YouTube things. I'm going to be on camera a little bit and I'm pretty nasty. So I definitely want to shower and wash my hair and get this prepped because to me, this is not particularly salvageable. Like we've got grease, we've got uncontrolled bangs. So since it is almost 10 p.m. My goal tonight is just to wash my hair and kind of blow it out gently so that tomorrow morning I can style it and it is tameable and clean. What I'm gonna do first is pop in the shower. So if you watched my video on my skincare travel, I also talked a little bit about my hair stuff and it's changed a little bit since then, but not a ton. This is what I pack all of my skin and hair care in. I never change this. This is always like, pre-packed, ready to go. So I can just grab it. I don't have to think like, oh, did I pack the shampoo or the conditioner or anything? It's just always there. I do not touch this unless I run out of something. And then I write myself a note. And as soon as I get home from my travels, I replace it so that this is just not part of my mental energy when I'm traveling. So shampoo and conditioner. And this is something I also do is I always pack my shampoo and conditioner and just like my liquidy stuff in a separate little plastic bag. Because if one of these explodes on the airplane with the change in air pressure. It won't just wreck everything. So I'm going to use my Purology Hydrate shampoo and conditioner. I bought big ones of these. And then as part of that, I got mini ones, which is perfect because then I can just keep refilling these from the bigger bottle. I'm going to get in the shower and I will pop back out here when my hair is clean and washed. Ooh, that was so nice. A shower after a long clinic day is one thing, but a shower after a clinic day, plus a flight, plus other transportation, even better. So I feel really refreshed now. I'm actually going to go put a sweatshirt on so that I feel like I can talk to you without a nip slip. But what I was going to tell you is that the other thing I pack for my hair is the Aquis hair towel. I'll go put it on. I'll kind of show you how I like to use it. But this is another thing that just like stays in my luggage. It is so light. It is so absorptive. So it really helps remove moisture from my hair, which I'll talk about why that's so important in a second, but I'm going to put clothes on and this on and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. I've got my little hair turban on. So while this absorbs some excess water from my hair, I'm gonna go in and do my nighttime skincare routine. I'm not gonna put that in this video because then this video would be too long and unfocused. But if you wanna see what my travel skincare routine is actually like in real time, let me know. I can totally make a video about that. The other reason I wanna let some excess water absorb out of my hair is because I usually do not travel with a blow dryer. I rely on the hotel blow dryer, which is usually pure trash. But because a lot of these hotel hair dryers are just like a ton of hot air and not a lot of actual moving air, I want to remove as much water as possible so that it's not just boiling my hair strands. So I think by the time I floss my teeth, brush my teeth, do my skincare, I will be ready to do my hair and get it ready to just go to bed because it is late and Mama wants some sleep. Skincare all done, time to do my hair. But before we blow dry, we're gonna prep. So I'm going to just finger comb my hair. So when your hair is wet is when it is the most fragile, the most prone to breakage. So you can either use a wide tooth comb, a wide tooth brush, like a wet brush. I love a wet brush, I just didn't pack one this time. I'm using my fingers and it tends to work pretty dang well. So we're just gonna comb this out. Before I go in and apply any heat to my hair, I'm gonna go in and put a heat protectant on my hair. So I'm using the Kerastase from the Resistance line, Cement Thermique. What they put on here is, it is a resurfacing, strengthening milk, blow dry care for damaged hair. My hair is bleached. It goes up a lot. It's damaged. So I'm gonna take about 
a dime sized amount. And what I like to do is like really distribute it into my palms. It's not gonna absorb into your palms. You don't have to worry about that. And then I'm just gonna run it basically from right above my ear down towards my ends, just with my fingers. So I'm keeping some of the product on my palm so that it's not all distributed at once. And to me, that helps you get a much more even distribution of your product. And then once I feel like there's nothing left on my fingers, I will like redistribute more onto my palms and then, or onto my fingers and then kind of rake through. And once I've gone through most of my hair, I will just take whatever is left, the little bits to the top of my hair. I never want to put too much up there. One, that's my healthiest hair because it's closest to my scalp. It's the newest, it's the least color treated, it's the oiliest because it's closest to the scalp, but also because I just don't want my hair to look greasy. And I just really make sure that is worked super evenly and well through my hair. And once I have that done, I'm ready to blow dry. So for blow drying my hair, I'm going to do basically just a rough blow dry until it is like probably about 90% dry. I know how to do a blowout, but Honestly, I don't have the patience nor the upper body strength to really pursue one. And I'm not gonna give myself a blowout right before I go to bed. So my goal is to get my hair as dry as fast as possible and then leave it a little bit damp so I can just tame kind of the top part. I know I'm gonna have to kind of do some restyling in the morning anyway, but this is just to make it manageable and so that I don't have to go to bed with wet hair. My hair is 90% dry and you can see it's a little bit frizzy puffy. The bigger reason I need to like stop here is because I have so many cowlicks of like one massive cowlick on this side. I mean, that's like Elvis status. Those must be tamed. So that has to happen when the hair is still a little bit damp. Also, I have a ton of regrowth postpartum. I'm super happy about it, but it is such a pain in the A to tame. So I'm gonna do that as well. So what I'm gonna do now is take about hmm, two thirds of my hair and just kind of put it up and out of the way. And then I'm gonna do like a quick round brush in like three quick layers. The clips I use are by Crown Affair. Every time I talk about these people are like, why would you pay $50 for two small clips? But I am very much a firm believer in quality over quantity, fewer, better things. I love these clips for travel because they're versatile. I can do styling with them, but I can also wear them. I love that they have these little grippies on the inside that I can get like a better hold, especially if you have, if you have fine or slippery hair. These are amazing. So don't come at me. You don't have to get them if that doesn't suit your budget or your preferences for clips, but I love mine. Okay, this is cute. The round brush that I'm gonna use is by Olivia Garden. It's the Ceramic and Ion Speed XL. This is a one and three eighth inches barrel, I believe. And it's not huge, it is super light. That's the reason it's my travel one is because it like weighs absolutely nothing and it's a little bit skinnier so it doesn't take up a ton of room in my suitcase or if I had to put it in my carry-on, it wouldn't be a big deal. So for my bangs, I take like I mean, not bangs, just my front pieces. I just take like this front section here. It's not even, I mean, I'm sure every hairstylist is just absolutely cringing inside watching this. I'm gonna blow dry it this direction first to like get my baby hairs to kind of go with the flow and then I'll kind of go back a little bit just to get some volume. That was putting off a lot of heat. So this is what it looks like when I'm done, just sort of blow drying it and then doing like a little quick round brushing at the end. There are still calyx and things like that, but again, that's gonna get messed up when I sleep anyway. So the goal here is to have not crazy frizzy hair, something that's still nice and voluminous and clean hair that I can work with in the morning. The very last thing I'm gonna do before I get my hair totally ready for bed is to put in a little bit of hair oil just to keep everything nice and nourished. I'm gonna focus it mostly on like the bottom thirds of my hair. I love the Virtue healing oil. I talk about this all the time. Their actual bigger version of this is also travel size friendly, but I thought this one was just like so cute. So maybe like five drops total. Again, through the full palms breaking through the bottom. Okay, 
that is acceptable. I just stepped out of the bathroom really quickly to grab some things to show you what else I pack as like hair accessories. So aside from my crown affair clips and my brush, I usually bring one comb to kind of do parting or if I have to do a little bit of teasing between this and this, I can get most teasing that I need done accomplished. And then I also bring a silk pillowcase and silk scrunchies. I'm so sad I left one of my silk pillowcases at a hotel. So now I'm just bringing colored silk pillowcases so that I don't lose it among the white sheets. So this one is by Slip. Uh, and it's a great kind of thing to reduce friction on the hair, help it not get frizzy. Again, I just wanna be efficient when I travel. And if I wake up and my hair is just a hot mess, and I have to be somewhere quickly. I don't love that. I'd rather get 20 extra minutes of sleep than have to like work on taming my hair when I wake up more than I otherwise would have to. So I use the slip pillowcase. I usually, when I travel with these, I just travel with it completely inside out. So I do it inside out, wrap it up. There's also travel pillowcases. If you watch my skincare travel with, I talk about another great silk pillowcase there. And then I usually just wrap my like, black silk scrunchies around it and that goes in my luggage. But when I sleep with my hair, I do not leave it down. It's That's too risky. So I have my silk pillowcase and then I usually put like a very loose, super high pony, like two wraps around. Normally I would need like four wraps around to actually for this to be secure. So it's very, very loose. It's not tugging on my hair at all. And it just keeps it up and out of my face and I sleep on my pillow like this. Could I wrap this around more? Yes. Could I braid it? Sure. But I've been doing this for like 15 years. It's been doing okay. So with that, I'm going to go get ready for bed and then we'll meet back in here tomorrow for me to like style my hair and finish up this little tube. Good morning. One thing I like about this hotel is that they actually have good coffee. So I went down to the lobby, got some coffee. Hair from last night has not been touched. So we're gonna do that. I'm getting picked up to leave in like 20 minutes. So I gotta get through this quickly because I obviously need to get ready. Luckily, I get to have my makeup done today. So I'm just going barefaced. So the first thing we're going to do is take my hair down and see what we're working with here. Okay, that is not too bad, we have nice, lots of volume. Okay, that's great. So I need to like retame. So this is all my like little baby hair regrowth. Baby bangs. I do need to tame this. So I am going to do a very quick round brush just of like the little front pieces here to make sure that they're going to stay down and where they need to be. I'll also probably do a really quick, just like comb and brush through this back section because I have a cowlick back here too. And I don't like the hair to separate and like randomly show my skin scalp back there. So once I do that, which should be very quickly, then I'm gonna go in with my curling iron and do the majority of the styling. So I'll just get the front pieces ready really quickly. Because of my calyx, it just kind of goes where ever. That seems good. We'll do like a modern middle part today. And then I'm gonna just section off. I just, that's like all the stuff that really needs to be tamed there. We'll do the same thing on this side. Little black silk scrunchie, one of the other ones I packed. We'll just section or tie everything else back here. So I'm not re-wetting my hair. I can just use a little bit of quick heat and it'll do the trick. Ooh, and while this is still warm, I'm gonna take a couple of these like lay flat clips and I'm just gonna put it right. Oh, you can see, already see my hair wants to go wild. I'm gonna pull it down to like calm the cowlick and just clamp that there. Do the same thing on the other side, just to, this is a good look, just to like keep it as flat as possible while I do the rest of the hair. But let's get into the rest of the hair. So I'm going to use this curling iron here. This is a T3 curling iron, it's one and a quarter inch barrel. And I really like this because I think it's very versatile. If you want a tighter curl, a one and a quarter inch is nice because you can just hold it there longer and you can get more of like a spiral. Or if you want a looser beachier wave, which is generally my vibe, you can do that too with this. I also like that this barrel is nice and long. So if you have longer hair, it works very well. And if you want to not use the clamp and just wrap around the barrel here or here, 
it's perfect for that. You don't get any little creases in your spiral. So highly recommend this curling iron. It also heats up super fast and it's very, very lightweight. So that's why this baby is my go-to for travel. It's the only heat styling tool that I brought with me. I literally have to leave in 12 minutes. Whew, okay, panicking. While that's heating up, I'm gonna walk you through kind of my dry styling products. I think these are so important. So first I have the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day, the Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. I even use this on clean hair at the root to give me a little more volume, especially if I'm in a climate where my hair is just looking a little bit flat or maybe I get to the hotel and because of the hard water or something, my hair feels very weighed down and just doesn't have the fluff that I want. This is really nice to have. I also have the Living Proof Full Dry Volume and Texture Spray. This is probably what I will be using most today since my hair does have volume, just to give it a little extra oomph and a little bit of grit. I don't need my hair to be super soft and touchable. I need it to last all day. This is like a work day. And then last, I have the Orbe Super Fine Hairspray. I really like this one. It doesn't get crunchy. And it's really nice if I need to like refresh my hair tomorrow, for example, and put new curls in it. I don't feel like this causes a lot of stickiness or greasy looking, you know, vibe in my hair. So these are sort of the holy trinity of my dry styling products. Yes, they're pricey for a small amount, but because I travel and I only use these a couple times when I'm traveling, they last so long and I'd rather invest in really high quality products that I know are going to deliver, especially because when I'm traveling, I just need stuff that I can rely on. So I pick these up pretty much every year at the Sephora sale and they're great. I know some people just like section their hair in like three ways. I like to first section my hair into essentially pigtails and I just do one side and then I do the other side. So I have my little silk scrunchie here so it's not gonna create a big dent in my hair. And then I am going to curl this probably in four sections. It's pretty fast. I find that using smaller sections when you're curling, you get a more even curl, but your curl also holds better. And it's just as fast to do a lot of little sections because you don't have to hold the heat on there as long. If you're grabbing like big chunks of hair, you end up having to hold the heat on there longer and it can be more damaging. And then see, versatile crown affair clip, going to kind of like just clip that to the side. This is super cute. And then I have my awesome barrel here to just sort of like brush through or I could use my comb to comb through the hair before I curl it. That is so important. You do not want to be heat styling knots into your hair. So I clamp up fairly high. I'm going to be twisting the curl away from myself. When I'm doing my hair on the road or when I'm traveling, I almost always do my hair all the way going away from myself because if I do the beachy waves where there are some waves going towards my face and some waves going away, the problem with that is that when I need to restyle it or touch it up, I find it's hard to figure out like, well, which curls were going backwards and which curls were going forward. So if I just curl everything on the right side of my head away from my face and everything on the left side of my head away from my face, it's a lot easier to touch it up and maintain. And if you're very observant, you probably saw a little bit of steam coming off my hair there. That's not ideal. It's probably just from the product I have in there, not my hair like actually steaming, but I don't like to see that. So I turned it down. So I had it on five and now I just like dropped it down to three. So it's reheating and recalibrating to the three levels of heat. So that's another reason I really like this curling iron is you can go up higher in heat, but you can also turn it down. So I'm turning it down a couple of notches, but this is kind of the level of curl that I'm gonna try to achieve here. So just grabbing another section. And again, clamp is facing towards the mirror, towards you guys. And I'm just gonna grab some, pull down and twist a bit. Do the same thing. And at the ends, I like to just sort of like clamp it and then just pull it out so that you get a bit of like a straightening effect on the end so that the end is not super curly cute. I didn't do that with this one. You can see how bent it is. And this one's a little bit straighter at the end. That is a more modern curl when it's straight. And that's actually what I wanted to achieve. I obviously haven't had enough coffee yet. So that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of my pieces. Nice and straight at the end. And I'm just letting these hang and I'm gonna let them cool because I need this curl to last all day. I really want those curls to dry down before I do any additional styling or touching them essentially. All right, my ride just texted me that she's here. So <laughs> that's rough. I'm gonna do this really quickly. And what I'm going to do then is bring my styling products with me to set. And then I'm gonna just essentially, while I'm commuting, let my hair completely cool down and then I'll finish styling there and I'll show you guys. So still a little bit of steam coming off the hair. It's probably from the heat protectant I put on right before. But I put on 
the virtue healing oil right before I did all of this, people are always like, you can't use oil as a heat protectant. It's, it's not like actual oil. It's not frying your hair. It's, it's protecting it. You want it. Those silicones in there are super protective. Silicones in hair products are awesome. Great. So we'll just keep on going. Okay, so when we get to the front, these are kind of the most important pieces. So rather than clamping, I'm actually just going to put the barrel there and just do a very kind of like loose wrap around. Cause that's all the bend I want in the front. I don't want the front to be too, too curly at all. And then this will obviously come out a little bit afterward. Okay, so that's like one side is curled. I'm gonna do the other side. Obviously you can't really appreciate the full effect until I finish the styling. So I'm just gonna whip through the other side. One thing I forgot to mention is this is pretty much how I style my hair for all of my YouTube videos. I always get questions. I'm like, well, what do you do for your hair? This is one of my like go-to quick styles. I just wanted, okay, so we're at the front. I wanted to like get that little kink out, but then flat to my head, wrapping up and away. Hold for like a quick second, drop it down. And then because I have these little baby hairs that are so rude, I'm gonna bring this to set and like finish up there. But this is like the bulk of everything. While this is cooling off, I'm gonna give it a little douse of the Orbe Super Fine Hairspray just to give it a little extra hold. I like to do this before I brush it out and then again after I've kind of set my entire style. And just a quick like... I love how fine this mist is and it smells so good. We'll push pause. This is what it is for now. Obviously I haven't brushed anything out. These are still a little warm so I really... I cannot stress this enough. Do not rake your curls out before they are completely dry. So I'm gonna go get in her car. We'll finish up on set. Ooh, also forgot to mention, to keep these kind of like out of my way, I'm just gonna use a little, again, the claw, this claw clip is amazing. I'm just going to gently pull my hair down and back, like, just like that. Doesn't have to look great, just needs to stay put. All right, welcome back. Makeup has been done. Hair has just been resting this whole time, completely cooling, haven't touched it. So now what I'm going to do is rake through it. I just, it's so funny that I'm in like an office, but this is, this is my life. I, I can't always film it all together. I'm just gonna use like wide fingers here to just like rake through these curls because I don't want tight little curls. Pick them up a bit, especially in the front. And that's kind of the aesthetic I want, like a controlled, loose, beachy wave. And then I'm gonna take the Living Proof, this is the Dry Texture Volume Spray, and just lift up about, probably about the top half of my hair here. I always spray one into the air first. Okay, just to make sure it's coming out in a nice powdery stream. At least 10 inches away, do not spray it like this close, you will have a big clump of product. Just like little like spritzes through. And then I just kind of like ruffle that in. And that just gives a lot more oomph without it being super frizzy and crazy. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So comb through, wide fingers, make sure your hands are totally dry, there's no gunk on them. So this is my ideal hair. I like this for travel hair as well because having a little bend in your hair, then if you're throwing it up in a clip or something like that, even if it gets a little bit kinked, it's not as obvious and it's much easier to touch up throughout the weekend or your travel stay. If I have it totally straight, then I feel like when it gets a little bit frizzy or it gets bent because I put it up for a second, it's just harder to save or revive. So to me, this is actually like the most low maintenance style. Yes, it takes like 15 minutes to put the curls in, but after that, I can just sort of set it and forget it. And it falls really nicely and naturally over the course of the day or the week that I'm traveling so that it's probably going to be the waviest it is now. And then towards the end of the day, these bends will be straightened out a bit. I'll come back at the very end of the day too. And just kind of show you how it stayed. I mean, look at how much volume that adds. This stuff is incredible. Like living proof dry texture volume spray. I am going to coat with the Orbe hairspray just so that everything stays in place. So I like to kind of hold it away from my face. Okay. 
I spray from the underside too, just so that it's, there's almost like a coat between my neck and the back of my neck where it can get a little sweaty or hot so that that hair stays protected as well. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So underneath and then hold it away from my face. And then I like to do the front pieces because those, you know, this is where all the baby hairs are. This is where it can get real bad. And then while my hairspray is still a little wet, I like to just like call many flyaways. Sometimes I'll take my little comb even and just Ta-da, this is my hair. And that is a wrap on my travel hair care. This is the final look. I'll show you from the back as well. Let's make sure you can see the whole bottom. If this video was helpful, don't forget to like it, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel. Also share in the comments your favorite travel hair care, your go-tos, your essentials. I wanna know what they are. As always, thank you so much for being here. I'll catch you next time.